kind of riding the bus, right? And we got to the part of the death. And as I was reading, I started crying on the bus. And I get this big black guy crying. <laughs> and I was like, he left us. He has left us. You know what I mean? Like, I was there. You know what I mean? And I was, I was just feeling it. After that, I needed more. I needed more and more and more and more and more about it. So I was like, so. You know, but the thing is, there were people around me, you know what I mean, that, you know, when you heard the word soon, it didn't sound right. It didn't sound good. It didn't sound, his brothers were crashed. You know, it was, it was always rough. It was always rough. It was always rough. And I just, it just, and then I looked at the people. And I'm not trying to say anything about anybody. I'm telling you about my experience. I'm just telling the truth. I'm not making this up. I just had that feeling. And honestly, it was not. And I'm not trying to, again, I'm not trying to say anything, but it wasn't until I got to a couple of months that I learned to love the I watched my teacher make a do one night. I never thought we do could be beautiful. You know, you just never watch it. This, there was a big uh, well, big chunk of water. He just walked over. I was like, look at him. You know, his hands are just flowing through the water. He just, you know, just washed himself. And I was like, wow, man. You know, and he's just doing everything. And I'm like, wow, that's beautiful, man. And then I just started watching other things. And then he just saw the beauty of the sun of the prophet. So I said, And then I said, you know what? I mean, I've been, I've been really, really. I blocked myself out of really the beauty of this being by shutting myself out like that. But again, I'm saying that to say that people become Muslims. You have to teach them everything. You got to show them the full spectrum. Right? You got to help. You got to instill the love of the Prophet as much as we have to instill the love of Allah in their hearts. I mean, would you agree? If you're like me. Doesn't matter how many years. We just we're the same. Right? In terms of our coming to Islam, we came. You know, a lot of directed us. Um, we have to learn to uh, to nurture the people who are coming into the day. And then brothers or sisters who have been practicing and want to come back. I mean, we gotta do the same for them. And we don't do it. We gotta take care of each other. That's right. Are you any other questions? My experience is negative. Hmm. Okay. Uh, first off, you know, I was in Syria for three years. And I did enjoy that and met a lot of wonderful people in Syria. But for me, you know, you know, as they say everybody has a has their place to go key in. Right? Like that soul just has a this connections. <coughs> And even though I enjoyed my time in Syria, my, my connection was in Yemen. And that was apparent from the first time that I had been there. Um, as they say that in Hawaii, you know, the mountains are brown, the dirt is brown, the houses are brown, the people are brown. You know? So, mashallah. And there I was, I was brown too. You know? And, uh, you know, in Hawaii, specifically, you know, there's nothing there. You know, it's just dirt. And, and people, you know, no restaurants. So I mean, in, in Tarim, you know, the Sayyid has restaurants and things like that. But in Tarim, there wasn't a lot. Um, you know, for at the time I was there, now it's different. But when I was there, and I, could, I have pictures, you know, the roads weren't even paved. It was just dirt and rocks. You know, you want to go on the street, you know, you're going to get dirt. If you're riding your bike, your face is going to have dirt and stuff all over it because they didn't have paved streets. But it was great. It was great. You know, I was away from everything and everybody. And my studies there were, uh, they improved. I mean, my nine months, I learned more in 40 days in Damascus than I learned in nine months. I'm sorry, I learned more in 40 days in Turin than I learned in nine months in Damascus. And that's not saying anything about Damascus. That's, that was me. You know what I mean? It's just me. A lot of people flourished in Damascus. But for me, I had just learned more there. Uh, I learned how to uh, give up a lot of myself 
for, for, for other people as well as my studies. Um, I mean, it's hard to talk about my experiences because it was a different time. Uh, and, and the thing is, and I tell everybody, you can't go someplace and expect to get the same experience as somebody else. It's not going to happen. Because I went not looking for experiences, I went there to study. So now if you go looking for experiences, then you're going to find, you're not going to get what I got. Because your intention is different. My thing is, for anybody going anywhere to study, that you have to go as, a, as an empty cup. You know, we ask the question because a lot of the kids in the school that did well were actually the enemies of the Norwegians. They did better than anybody else. And so one of the brothers asked him about Leo Jeffries, why is it that they do so well? How come is they excel in the classes more than anybody else? And he said, because they have open hearts. See, you Americans, you come in here with all your criticisms, you, you British kids come with your criticisms, and you know, I'm not too sure about that, or how come it's this, and that, you always ask some questions. Well, these other students are just receiving, they're just taking it in. So in other words, you're coming as an empty cup. You're not coming in as a full cup, because you can't give a full cup any more juice. Or more. You can't put the fluid in, right? When you're empty, you can be filled. There's a the difference. So if you're going to go study someplace, forget everything you thought you knew, and be ready to receive things that a little bit you know. That's, that's the best thing for anybody who wants to study. Uh, and that's anywhere, you know? And that everywhere is right for everybody. Some people can function. My brother, he loves his coffee shops. No coffee shops in Turin. You know, if you're going to go into Sarn, you study at the uh, Town Man, I really love their coffee shops there. But they weren't his style of coffee shop. I don't know what his problem was. But, anyways, I mean, there's just a lot of things. I find, and I'm not saying because everybody enjoys people here in Yemen, I find the Yemen is very good people. I've never had problems with them. In Syria, I was ready to beat up people. Uh, and yet, I never had that problem. But one thing I always had to be slick about was, was when I got in the taxi cab, I'd have to tell the driver, okay, now look, I'm going to pay you this amount of money from here to there, right? And he'll say, yeah, 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 okay. Kul qabeltu. All right, kul. He'll say, okay, qabeltu. Ah, that's this one. I'll say, that, you know, it's an op It's an op And it's a contract. Because what they'll do is they get to you get to the hotel and they'll be like, oh, look at your bag for holding my car down and waiting for wheels and you put the wear and tear on my car and you need to give me a little extra more. You know, you know, and we have a contract. I told you I was paying you this, I'm going to give you this, and that was it, right? And you said my belt, so that's it, it's done. You because know? if you don't do that, you know they'll wait you out. <laughs> they'll sit right there in front of your house or wherever it is you went to the hotel. They'll go into the hotel and sit down in the and then in the guest room, in the waiting room, and wait for you to come back downstairs, hey, you owe me money. <laughs> <laughs> That's happened to me. And so, you know, mashallah, but that was, that was it. I've never really had arguments with anybody, you know. And you know, you can't, like most places, you're not going to haggle the enemy down. The price is the price. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, mashallah. But yeah, my experiences were beautiful. My experiences were beautiful. Again, I really want to thank you all for uh, welcoming me to your community. Uh, it's been a very, very nice stay here. Uh, I don't know if it's the city, because the city is kind of laid back. You know, the Welsh are really nice people, so I don't know if that's rubbed off on you, or you rubbed off on them. I don't know which it is. But either way, I've really enjoyed the couple of days that I've been here in your presence. You have uh, really, truly made me feel welcomed and wanted and, um, and well received. And I really want to thank you all for that. And brothers who have spent time with me, uh, personally, I really appreciate your head up. I appreciate your presence. I appreciate your efforts and your intentions and your conversation. It's really been good. And you've allowed me to be me. You know, because you know, some people have this attitude. And I don't like being called Sheikh. I'm not a Sheikh. Student on the step at, at the most. You know, Sheikh, as you know, is a very heavy term. You know, and I don't think that I'd be fit. But, you know, with that term, there comes a certain expectation of action and things like that. And you all have allowed me to be just me. And that's important. And very important to me. So I thank you all for that. And I really and I truly pray that Allah SWT allow all of you to grow. Thank you. And, uh,